I grew up in L.A., but I also went to school in Venice Beach. Mm. And that was like during junior high, which they call middle school now. But back then, I was already going down to Venice because Marina Del Rey Skate Park opened up in 1978. And so we were going down there every day. My dad, you know, was like, wow, you want to go skate not only on the weekends, but every day. And you had to pay to skate back then. And so he's like, you know what, I'm just going to manage the skate park. And I was like, you are so cool, Dad. (laughs) You're going to manage the skate park? He's like, yeah. And so it became my backyard. And that's how I got introduced to guys like Tony Alba, Jay Adams, Shogo Kubo, all the Z-Boys, the Dogtown guys who kind of took me under their wing and raised me. But then I also went to school down in Venice. So Venice became kind of my second home. I lived in L.A. off of Arlington and Washington Boulevard near Crenshaw with my dad and my mom lived up off of Wilshire and Western. But I would truck down to the beach every single day all through junior high. And that's when skateboarding really blew up. Like the mid '80s, the early to mid '80s was when skateboarding really became something bigger than just a rebel sport. I started my own company in '85. Uh, started making a lot of money with big sponsorships, traveling the world. Like 17, 18 years old, skateboarding started to really find itself as a professional, you know. And plus, with the um, how it was advancing, evolving with the, the product, with the wheels and the boards and just board shapes. I came up with a shape called the Hammerhead at that time. Yeah, totally, totally. And this is the 30th anniversary year, actually, of the Hammerhead and the Soy Skateboards. So it's a great time I love to it. be on your show. <laughs> you know, yes. talk about a perspective, you know, of things, you know, and the right timing to do it. Mm. But this is the 30th anniversary, and to think that it's been that long since it started, because it seems like yesterday that we were creating maneuvers. I was, you know, coming up with tricks. We were, yeah, Christ Air, you know, Rocket Air. Yeah, doing Christ Airs, Rocket Airs, but also, <laughs> you know, Guinness Book of World Records and just really taking skateboarding to new heights on a commercial uh, uh, business level. And, you know, look at where it is today. I mean, it's one of the most influential sports on not only sports and athletics, but also where it comes to fashion, when it comes to music, when it comes to, you know, it, just cultural, you know, lifestyle, yes. art. Everything is so attractive to skateboarding because it has an individual almost expressionism that comes with it, that people feel free to be who they want. And skateboarding gives them that, that out, outlet. But for me, growing up in L.A. has really shaped who I became because of my father being an artist, a surfer. Surfing was a huge part of my influence and why I, you know, follow and look up to certain people like Jerry Lopez, you know, and yes. Tom Kern. I, I mean... These guys are surfers, but these are the guys, you know, Larry Bertelman and Buttons. These guys yeah. are the ones that really made me want to skateboard the way I do and take skateboarding, you know, in the street and, and let them know that there's a there's an art to it as well. It's not just a competitiveness. Yeah. The style is something that was so important to us back then. And even now, you know what I mean? I'm still involved with skateboarding. I'm on the board of a lot of associations. I get the ambassador for Vans, you know, company, and they fly me and Tony Alva, Cavalero, Jeff Grosso around, you know, hmm. John Cardiel, Ray Barbie. These guys have paid their dues, and now we get to travel around and represent skateboarding as an ambassador to the world through these companies like Vans, who are like the biggest companies in skateboarding now today. Big time. I mean, they're like a $2 billion company, but they aren't forgetting where they came from. And it's because of, you know, us not forgetting where we come from. I think California has been that place where skateboarders have been able to almost communicate their lifestyle and it channel out around the world to where if you look at now, 
skateboarding is around the world and why because it started right here in mm. california and i happen to just grow up right here this happens to be my backyard <laughs> and so sick. i'm fortunate <laughs> you know what i mean i'm really fortunate to be able to you say that jay adams was like my big brother and tony alva wow you know wow. Was, that's I crazy was sponsored by him at 10 years old rest in peace jay to jay rest old. in peace I, these things are something that's so special, you know, that I got to experience and, uh, of, a, of a skateboard culture that now today is like looked at as something very significant. Yes. Very, yes. very prominent. And it's here to stay. Yeah, Christian, I, you know, I was introing you, sir, and I had made the point that not only did you shape the skateboard industry personally with the evolution of, of tricks, with your own style, your own unique, not only skating style, but your unique style of dress, uh, very independent, love it. Uh, you know, you had the long hair back in the day. You were like a heartthrob back then. Still are, I'm sure. <laughs> but back then, definitely, I remember you were in all the magazines. And, you know, I make that point that not only did you shape the skateboard industry, but you have shaped culture, specifically human culture, transcending America. Because as we know and as our audience is going to start to really understand, skateboarding starts in California and has made its way around the world and back. This goes out to everybody. And Christian, I want to ask you, sir, you know, what's the difference between then and now? You know, not just Venice or, you know, SoCal, but, you know, the world, America, you know, what's the difference from your perspective? You know, with a couple decades roaming this planet and skating on this planet. <laughs> Well, the difference is definitely the culture is uh, more accepted. Back then, we were outlaws and rebels, and we were cutting our own cloth at the time. Where now, it's like a cookie cutter, this thing out, and, you know, there's grandmothers taking their kids to the skate park to hopefully become the next phenom or have hmm. a career and occupation in skateboarding. Where back then, it was like we were draining backyard pools, sneaking into, you know, drainage ditches and just trying to, you know, have fun. And, and, and really, we were living it regardless if we got paid or not. And so that's where the difference is. You know, it was being birthed out of sheer passion and the love that we had for the sport. Hmm. Because there was a day where we were skating for $200 for first place, hmm. $600 hmm. for first place, <laughs> you know, and competing our hearts out you know and it was the best in the world at the time hmm. and there was like 35 competitors you know where where now there's a waiting list to get into events because there's too many people hmm. and now there's compartmentalized well there's street there's vert there's mega ramp there's downhill there's you know what i mean yes there's all these different types of disciplines in skateboarding that you know, we have these subcultures within a culture and mm. they have their own cliques, their own style. And so the difference is massive. You know, back then we were really paving the way and breaking down the walls of acceptance, you know, to the corporate world who's now fully involved with skateboarding. Yeah. It's on TV, you know, NBC and Street League, you know, yes. all these things, you know, X Games. Do tour. I mean, these are major, major, heavy hitting sponsors that are now supporting something that when we started was kind of like this rebellious, you know, uh, 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 almost anarchy kind of lifestyle that, you know, didn't get the respect, so to speak, on a professional level. But I knew through what I had in my mind what skateboarding would be. You know, because of my 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 own beliefs in it, that this is going to be the best and coolest sport and lifestyle in the world. <laughs> and that, you know, because I thought so. I thought everyone should think so. <laughs> so it, it didn't yeah, dawn man. on me that 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 what I thought wasn't 
cool or wasn't <laughs> going to be what everybody else thought. I just thought, of course they're going to think this. <laughs> Why wouldn't they think this? You know, I come from, you know, a family that, you know, raised me to know better and to have respect, mm. to be, be uh, thoughtful, to be generous and to, to, to really respect, you know, all people. And so for me, it was like, okay, well, if I'm to respect, they should respect me as well. And so it, it was almost like there was this tolerance of, of like, okay, they should just accept this because I like it and it's something that I do. But in my head, I was like, no, everyone's going to like this. <laughs> I mean, totally. you know, and sure enough, it, like, it was like amazing how it took form so early and it became this this almost radical culture that, that now you look back and it's like everyone wants to go back to the eighties and, and figure out what's the recipe. How yeah. did you do it? What, what created style? How come you design clothes like that? There's all these retro things that are going back to there. Yes. Because, because we, we were the ones that kind of were the test. You know, we were the, the ones that, that, tested the waters and, and really had the creative uh, uh, imagination at the time based on our surroundings and the way that culture was at that time. Because now it's like you got the internet, you've got social media, everyone wants to do their own thing, but they're regurgitating all this stuff and they're just redoing it in a, in a like a combo way with, you know, say uh, a, a era <laughs> way where they're where cross you know, okay, we're going to take a little bit from the 80s and we're going to mix it with the 90s and we're yes. going to throw it out here in the 2015 day, <laughs> you know, and, totally. and rather than just, you know, take from where they came from, who they are, and be that. See, artists, this is where art comes in and really has this authentic way of not copying and not being a follower. Hmm. And so I grew up in an art home and an art kind of like, you know, a uh, uh, world. And so for me, it was like, I didn't want to be like everyone else. And so, I mean, obviously look at, I was like, Oh yeah, these spandex, all oh, these are going to be aerodynamic. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, these are sick. Totally and brother. And they're purple. And you know, I was like, Oh, but you wore them good. <laughs> you wore it good. I was like, I was like, this is like amazing, but did it catch on? Was it a fad? No. And I knew that, you know what, this isn't what everyone's going to do, and that's why I did it. Yeah. See, I didn't, like, do something, you know, it wasn't about gain, so to speak, as much as personal reflection on, on expressionism. You mm. know, it's like almost like art. Art is, you know, it, it, it's in the eye of the beholder on its value. You know what I mean? It, yes. it has nothing to do with how much the paint costs, how big the... The canvas is, oh, you painted on glass, so it should be expensive. No, it could be a drawing and it could be worth a bazillion dollars because <laughs> it's the it's the originality, it's the origin of where it comes from. And people who research, study, and have wisdom and, and insight and knowledge on whatever they're into, they know better. You know what I mean? Mm. And they understand that. And I think that that's where we're coming to that point where people are wanting to do their own thing. Mm. And it, it's it, it, in that day when we were doing it, there wasn't so many people doing it. So it was a little bit more easier to pick and choose yes. the style yes. or the colors or the shapes that you want. Or now it's almost like, okay, well, what do you do? Well, that's where imagination comes in. And, and I'm looking forward to seeing these new school guys come up with their own style, with their own tricks and their own fashion, you know, because yes. really sky's the limit on that. I'm still trying to invent new looks and come up with new ways on how to, you know, express myself, whether it be the shape of my board, the color of my board, how I dress, you know, tight pants, baggy pants, Adoras, you know what I mean? Yeah, All yeah, those bro. things add to who you are. And mm. so, you know, there's a big difference between when we started, 
you know, where I picked it up from where the dog town and the boys, you know, out of the seventies. Yeah. You know, the early seventies into the late seventies where I picked it up. Wow. And took it from there to where it is today. 